What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Of course, this is TWA Motorsports and today we are back on the black uh, what we call a lawn mowing truck around here. So in the last video on this thing, you guys saw me put new headlights in it, all new bulbs, uh, seem to be holding up really well. Definitely made the front end of this thing look a lot better. But today uh, we're gonna continue on something that's in a kind of an annoyance when you're driving with the windows down, down the road. And that is the headliner. Pretty common issue on these things, guys, for the headliner to be bad. Um, I don't, you know, I. it's because GM did not wrap this around the ledges. They just went right to the line and ended it. And so over time, this is what you get, this peeling off of stuff. And so what I've done is I actually had an extra headliner. I took it to my upholstery shop, which is actually my neighbor, works out really nice, and he recovered it. So today we're gonna be replacing that. I'm gonna show you guys that process. Uh, the other thing we're gonna replace is while we've got that out, I don't know if you guys can see, but it has leaked um back here which is really common for this guy to go bad the third brake light so we're going to be replacing it with another gm unit and guys i will list all this stuff in the description down below like always so we're going to replace that as well and then since we have to take our pillars off here in order to get the headliner loose i'm going to actually i've got some extra four by six speakers that we're going to throw in while we're doing all that so we've got you know a little bit to accomplish i'm going to try to get it all done this evening uh, i've got a couple hours before it gets dark and as you guys can see i am working outside the shop is full i got parts strung everywhere with um the green truck and the camaro depending on when i decide to upload this video but we've got a lot uh involved in there and it's warm so out here in the breeze in the shade that seems to be the best place to work right now um but anyway let's go get some tools and let's get started getting this thing out of place so we don't need a lot of tools i got a couple screwdrivers a pick some pry tools where we're going to start guys is right here we need to get this panel up and it's actually broken i see i think just four clips hold this guy down and i think what we'll do is we'll just kind of put this stuff in the bed of the truck but once we get that we're going to move on up here i'll try to move this without making a ton of noise up to the pillar we need to take it out. Same situation here. Generally, you can get your hands behind it and pull it out. It doesn't have a broken tab. Some of them do. So we got that out of the way. We need to do the exact same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna go do the other side and then we'll come back and work on some of the stuff up top. Now, before it gets piping hot, we're gonna see if we can get this light out. It's probably already pretty hot, but there's a there's an opening on this side and then once you do that I'm sure this thing is ridiculous I'm gonna try to hook it here Woo, it's warm we got it out of there though so uh, once you get that out you can swing this over and then it comes out the other side and then I'm gonna see if we can get it unplugged sometimes it Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it isn't. Just a little tab on one side um, that we can pull the plug out with. And this one's like all the others, it's all melted and um, generally doesn't like to stay together. But we got that loose. And then I think guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring you over here and we're gonna take the handle out next. Now to get the handle out, uh, I'm gonna use a pick or, or you can use a flat blade screwdriver. What we need to do is just pull this straight back like that. These two clips just kind of keep it in place in the roof. Now you can see we're loose. And uh, actually guys, the next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna take the two Phillips out of the um, third brake light in the back. So for this, like I said, just two Phillips screws and it does have a crack in it. Pretty common. These things get, you know, a lot of sun and weather. If you don't take this out, you're gonna have issues with it leaking and then your brand new headliner is gonna look like crap again. So guys, anytime you see any kind of water staining on the top, it's always a good idea to replace this. And I only use GM ones. Um, I'm just a stickler on that. There's a plug 
on the side here will get unplugged. There we go. And you can see that this is gonna push in this hole right here. So aside from that, there is a little piece that you pinch together. A lot of times it's not connected. I pinched that, so that goes in. Now let's go back to the inside. In order to get these panels out, which I wanna do next, we need to get this out because it sandwiches around them. So there's clips all the way up and you can see I'm missing the uh, closeout panel. But I'm just, you guys just saw me do this on the green truck. I like to go all the way down and kind of put my hands around it so I'm pushing it out as opposed to pulling on the plastic. Ooh, that one's snug. Let's see how many are broken. Actually, none of them. So now that that's out, there's two Phillips screws right here. We need to get out, and then this same thing pops out with clips as well. Let's see if I can find my screwdriver, and we'll get these two Phillips out. Like I said, we'll get the Phillips screws out of here. Just two of them. And then you can either start at the top or the bottom. Doesn't really matter. Just be careful because this thing's probably been in here a minute. I like to get a big long screwdriver and help start it. So what I do is I get back as far as I can because there's a clip in the middle and I try to push it out like that. And then you're not bending it here trying to get back to it. So same thing, just take your screwdriver and kind of wedge it back behind in the middle. Work your way down, trying to work your clips loose. And we got that one out without breaking any. None of the clips are broken. Now we have access to that speaker, and actually it's an aftermarket Pioneer, but they're all jacked up and sound terrible. So we're gonna replace those, like I said. But before we do that, I'm gonna get that other panel out and then we'll work on what's holding this, which is the coat hooks and the actual visors, the only thing left to get the actual headliner out other than the wiring. Now I wanna show you about the wiring, which is different than my green truck. If you guys noticed in that video, um, it went behind the dash and I couldn't do anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull all these little retainers out with my uh, clip removal tool. So we got all those loose. If you notice, this thing comes down on the outside. You know, on the green truck, it went on the inside of the dash, but on here, it goes on the outside. So it goes all the way. You can see there's a clip there we're gonna have to pull out. It comes down right here and goes into this junction box. So once we get the junction box out of the way, hopefully you guys can see this. It's plugged in right here. And I also showed you guys in the video uh, when I did the headlights that this is already pinned for the exterior temp control. So at some point we'll get a mirror and uh, we'll be able to get uh, the outside temperature and the direction like the compass. So I got two clips to pull here and then I can feed this thing up and out and then we can move on to getting the visors and the coat hooks out. You can see we got that wire fished out. Just took a couple minutes, and I believe these are T15, guys. So if we undo this, got a T15 on this side. And this is generally the way I like to do it. I like to do the visor last. I know I did it a little bit differently on my truck, but or on my green truck. But if you do it this way, your, your headliner didn't just fall in your lap because once we get the visor loose, there will be nothing holding the front side of this. Everything's out of the way. And then of course we gotta do the visor on the other side and then I will show you guys, hopefully without the headliner falling in my face, uh, how to do the coat hooks, which are kind of tricky themselves.
should be three screws in here. It doesn't look as though this has been out before, which is good. And I will tell you guys, these are different colors. So the, the green truck has like a different color light gray. It's still light gray, but they went to like a, a really light gray on the 2003 and up models. I think my upholstery guy called it shale even. Maybe that's what it's called. We got that out. I'm gonna clean this up. I'll kind of show you guys what I'm using. It's just, I'm just using a small purpose cleaner, but most of this stuff's pretty easy to clean. And uh, I don't wanna put a dirty visor up against my brand new headliner, but I'm not gonna show you guys the other side. I'm gonna take the other visor out real quick. You can see that we are, well, I guess there may be one more clip up here, but we are for the most part loose. It could be also, sandwiched in the glass, which happens a lot. Goodness, it is snug in there, that's for sure. But we'll go get the, let me go get the other visor out and see how much fall we get. Now it did fall quite a bit, guys. Um, it, it was stuck in the front. So how this works is in the factory, they actually put the glass in after they put the headliner in. So a lot of times your leading edge, either of the felt or the actual headliner itself is stuck in the glue from the factory. So we've got it all loose other than the coat hangers. And uh, let me show you guys how I like to take these out. I like to use two flat blade screwdrivers, get on both sides of the bottom and we're gonna pull it straight towards us. Sometimes it takes a little bit, especially if it's been on there for years. Got one side started. Woo wee, it's snug. There we go. Now it should be loose. There we go. Now we just gotta do the other side and guys, we will be free to get this thing out of here. At this point, you can see we are completely loose and um, I forgot to unplug the mirror. So this guy obviously goes to the mirror. I need to reach up there and unplug it and uh, I completely forgot that, guys. But at that point, we can drag this old one out. You should have enough room to get it out uh, without having to take the seats out. Sometimes you can tilt it up, get it under the steering wheel and pull it out. Or sometimes you get lucky enough and you have enough room between the dash and the pillar there to get it out. Let's see if we can drag this thing out. It's gonna make a liar out of me. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. We're gonna go towards the passenger side. And I don't remember how I did it in my green truck. I think my seats were up. We can get it on the top side of the seat here. I think that's what I'll do. I'll go lift the other seat and we'll come behind the seat, hopefully. Let's move them up too. Now, hopefully we can hold it down past the mirror and take it out one side or the other. Probably be easier on that side since the harness is on that side. Definitely easier on this side. All right, that's it guys, we got it out. Um, so, about the wiring, you can see the factory glues the wiring down. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this off of this headliner, I'm gonna go inside, I'm gonna use some hot glue and I'm gonna glue this back to the headliner. I'm probably gonna take it in, but actually before I rip this off, so I can kind of see which way it goes. I mean, this is pretty obvious. Obviously you got one to the mirror. One goes to the third brake light back here, and one goes to the um, headline, or the uh, light in the liner, but there's nothing on the other side. The other thing is you'll have to just pinch the coat hooks to get those out, and then I'll show you in just one second how you get the actual um, handle off on the other side as well. 
So to get these guys out, you literally just pinch the uh, outer pieces and they'll push through. There we go. You can see they've got these little spring-loaded pieces that keep them in. Don't try to just yank those out, guys. And then for the handle, let's look at it. So in order to get it out, we need to push these guys towards the middle. Sometimes it helps if you have a screwdriver. Probably should grab one. But if you push these guys, yeah, I'm gonna have to have a screwdriver. There we go. Then it'll come unclipped and the handle will pull out. And that's all there is to it. So all we have is that other coat hanger. And then I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna go in and hot glue this. I won't show you guys that. Get it on the new liner and um, we'll come back and go back together with at least the liner, getting it up into place. Then we'll worry about the speakers, the third brake light and whatnot. I'm not sure really what's going on with my glue gun. It's taking a long time to heat up. So I figured what I'd do is while I'm waiting, the hour it takes, I guess, to heat this thing up, I'm using some um, power clean or super clean, I mean. And uh, how this works, guys, I just spray a little bit on the towel and then I'm just gonna rub in the areas that are kind of heavily soiled. This stuff's pretty forgiving um, as far as the material. So little spots like this generally come out just by rubbing on it. You may have to go over it a couple times, but you can see, you know, some of the spots come out. You may not get them all, but it's definitely worth a try since you've got, uh, you know, a brand new headliner going in you don't want to get these like super wet though because they're generally cardboard on the inside and sometimes you can even just use a damp cloth but I'm just gonna gotta go over each one of them cleaning what I can See if we can get these spots out. Maybe by the time I get both these knocked out, the uh, steam cleaner, or the steam cleaner, the hot glue gun will be warm enough to actually put some glue on that wiring harness. And look, I asked my upholstery guy and he said that you don't have to do that. I just figured it might help for it to stay. That looks better already. I might go over, uh, you know, the heavy, heavy soiled spots twice, but just one pass there, guys, made a huge difference. Still got some spots on the front, though. All right, I won't make you guys watch me clean this anymore. Like I said, you could even use a damp cloth with a little bit of soap in it. Would work as well. Um, this stuff just seems to do a little better at whatever these stains are. But we'll get them cleaned up, and uh, hopefully the next thing you guys see will me, be me bringing the new headliner out. I've got it in on my kitchen table, waiting for the glue gun. Now we've got the harness all hot glued in place. You can see that it's nice and stuck. Uh, routed it just like the other one. I used the other one inside. Everything's in place, guys. I went ahead and put our coat hooks, just pushed them through. I didn't lock them. And I also went back together with our handle over there. So uh, I'm gonna attempt to put it in now. And you wanna be real careful not to, um, you know, scrape it up against the side of this dirty truck. Probably should have washed the truck before I did this, but I didn't. So we're gonna attempt to slide it in.
kind of get it up where it's supposed to go and get it somewhat maybe snapped in place. This is the kind of the tough part. I want to get the piece in the back if you've still got it. If we can get it in place, that would be awesome. Kind of tough to see it though. Or if we could get one of our hooks. Okay, I got that hook started. Um, I went ahead and cleaned off the pieces that hold the headliner and I'm trying not to push really aggressive on the headliner itself, but I've got some fingerprints. They should work their way out, but I'm going to go ahead and push the rest of it in place and then get it secured with, um, the visor holders on the inside. Well, we've got it in. You can see I've got some fingerprints on there. Like I said, guys, I think I can get that out. And with some heat, I think they'll come out anyway. But you can see I've got one visor in place. Still need to clean a little bit more on it, but I thought it'd be easier to clean in place. Um, things to watch out for. Obviously, you need to make sure that your harness, you get it over here. But the harness that goes back to the third brake light, you need to make sure that that guy is poking through. If you have two people to help, I actually had to pull one of my coat racks down, pull this guy out a little bit, make sure that wire was going through because I glued it a little too close to the leading edge. But at this point, we just need to make our way through and uh, put all the bolts back in. I'm going to go ahead and put this visor in next. And uh, then we can probably at that point move on to the speakers. I may go ahead... Actually, I tell you what, I'm going to put this visor in. We're going to hook this back up, get it ran back down where it needs to go. And then I can actually clean the pillars and get those installed. One of the things I'm going to do, um, since I have them, is I've got some LEDs here that I can put in this light. And I'm hoping that... There we go. One of them will fit. I knew one of them probably would. Not my favorite brand, but... I got them in one of those packs of like a bunch. Matter of fact, I wonder if this one, this one seems a little nicer. Let's try it. Yeah. <sighs> Looks good. You can see, I, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I got the pillars back in. I cleaned those up, got those in. So everything on the front stationary, I also plugged the mirror back in, even though we're going to be replacing it soon. But I think at this point, guys, I'm going to go, we're going to go back in the back and get the third brake light in just because I'm running out of daylight. And um, then we can come back in and hopefully mess with the speakers a little bit. Now this guy... I actually ordered a new one for my green truck and uh, since we got this out and the green truck's actually a part, like I said, I don't know which way you're going to guys be watching these videos, but uh, I figured let's just put it in, but I want to clean this ledge off. And guys, the main reason I like to replace these is because this gasket, the seal around the outside goes bad. And so the new light's not going to come with this piece. It's only going to come with this inner. So you do have to unhook these guys. There's a clip in there and there, here and here. You got to unclip those in order to um, undo it. But then all we got to do is plug it in, make sure it stays. And you got to put the bottom in first and then bring it up. Definitely looks better back here, that's for sure. I'm going to clean up these screws. Actually, they're not bad either. I replaced the screws in my green truck, but these actually look pretty decent. And here's what's important. Do not over tighten this, guys. I recommend replacing this. If you could find the seal, you could just replace the seal. You know, if you're, you know, obviously if, if your truck's been inside, it's most its life. 
um, you don't have to replace this. The seal may not be bad, but this truck obviously, from the looks of it, has lived a pretty rough life. And so in my opinion, replacing this, and you guys could see the water staining on the inside. This actually has LEDs I put in the um, cargo lights. We are stationary. The seal's up in there nice. You can see it just in that ledge. We're good. Now let's go to the speakers. Now for speakers here, these have obviously been replaced. Um, these are not the factory speakers, and I'm pretty sure this isn't the factory connection. But, holy cow, I don't know how that didn't poke out the side of the truck. Good night. So, we're going to take these, uh, I guess self, well, they're not self tappers. I'm hoping that the speaker that I got lines up. We don't have any problems. I'm also hoping that there's some sort of connector on here and I don't have to like solder any connections. Probably should have got a drill. Would have made my life a little easier. Let's see what kind of connection these have on the back of them. The speakers are toast. Awesome. Well, they don't have the greatest connection. In fact, I'd call that a really crappy connection. We're going to unwrap this and see what we got. It looks like they just twisted them together. Bad gummit. That's my luck, guys. Yeah, they did. All right. Well, we're going to have to solder these. I won't show you guys that. Um, I'm going to have to drag my um, extension cord out here and solder a new connection on. But in the meantime, I'm going to go grab my speakers and see if these leads fit on the ones that I have to replace them with. I did want to show you guys what I'm replacing it with. So these are a set of Kicker DSs and, you know, pretty decent speaker for the money. Not the best, but not the worst either. So. I did get some shorter screws. I got them hooked to the magnet down here, but we're gonna put these in and then we'll talk about what wire goes where because on obviously the kicker stuff, the black with the black stripe on there is negative. The one with no stripe is the positive, but which wire is it on the GM side? We'll talk about that here in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and mount this and then I'm gonna loop the wire through so I can uh, solder it in the truck. It'll kind of hold it there in that opening right below the speaker. And uh, then we'll talk about what wire goes to which on the GM side, like which one's negative, which one's positive. Got them mounted. Um, all right, guys, so the wiring, brown, positive, okay? Left, rear, brown, positive. Yellow is negative. So that's what we got on this side. I'm getting ready to solder them, and I've got some heat shrink here. And then I'm going to wrap them in tape just so they don't get all jacked up with that sharp edge right below them. And then uh, on this side, dark blue. So you can see the dark blue here, that is the positive. The light blue is the negative. So right rear is negative is light blue, positive is dark blue. So same thing here, I got this mounted. I'm going to uh, solder these right here, guys. I've got my heat shrink tubing, got some extra tape, got my solder, my soldering gun. Let's get these things soldered so we can put those panels back in place. I really need to clean those off. I probably will do that off camera. Uh, but that, I guess, is our next step. I, I already tested these. I just turned on the radio to make sure everything worked. They do indeed work. Uh, no shorts in the wires or anything like that. So, um, yeah, let's get these soldered and get those panels back in. With the help of my wife, she cleaned up all these back panels. Definitely a lot better, guys. So we got them all back in. Of course, they just snapped back in the same way they came out. Got the new speakers in. Got the new grill in. Um, grill light third brake light obviously got this the um headliner in and uh i'm pretty happy with the results guys so here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna just vacuum this thing out real quick and kind of wipe down the floors you know these floor mats uh or this mat floor 
non-carpet floor if you step on rock like this and get in it tracks it up so it, it makes me nuts but you know for a work truck it actually works out really well so either way we got this accomplished i'm going to clean this up i'll give you guys one more look at it let's take a look at it guys um like i said i kind of vacuumed it out a little bit nothing uh nothing major but just kind of wiped down the floor with a damp rag and um you know it's gonna get dirty it's a lawn mowing truck but definitely a lot better uh look it's not falling in your face it's not flapping in the wind we got the visors cleaned up i went over them one more time definitely looking a lot better cleaned up all of the plastics the light i know i didn't show you guys that but then we got all the panels back in place got those new speakers and then definitely the shiniest thing on the outside of the truck is the third brake light so uh, all in all i'm happy my uh, upholstery guy if you guys are wondering he charged me i want to say like close to 100 bucks to do this with me pulling it maybe it was like 80 i don't remember but either way uh, i'm happy with the results now we just need to uh, I, like i said i really want to find a mirror since i know that everything's ready to go for the uh compass and the exterior temperature and then you know just like i said kind of plugging away a little bit at a time we're just gonna fix some things i noticed guys when i took this panel off it's not wanting to stay because the panel underneath it had a ton of rust on it i don't know if they had left the window down at some point or if it's the rust just gradually eating into the bottom side of that panel i don't i don't know and uh, we may be getting to the point where that may not be fixable i'm not even sure at this point but either way got that headliner in got the lights got the speakers and i am shot i am literally soaked in sweat i'm dirty i got crap all over me but guys if you did enjoy this video if you like this truck if you think i should keep going or do you think i should try to find one that has less stress let me know in the comments down below but if you guys are not subscribed go down there hit the subscribe of course like always ring that bell icon that notifies you every single time we drop a new video and stay tuned to see what we work on next one quick thing i know this video is normally over by now but uh I did have those installed backwards. So the little hooks right here, they actually open towards the front. So I wanted to let everybody know I did get those the way they were supposed to before somebody posts in the comments, hey, those are backwards. But anyway, got them fixed.